Hello everyone, welcome back to another one of our character Bible studies. We're going to be discussing the Attack on Titan characters, Rainer and Bertolt. Now, for those of you who have read the manga, we'll be discussing the things that we are guaranteed to see in Season 2, but for those of you who have not and are holding out for Anime Night, I would encourage you to wait until these things have been revealed because major spoilers ahead. There's very little that we could discuss regarding the biblical relevancy of the characters Rainer and Bertolt without going into uh, what is yet to be revealed. So, fair warning for spoilers, but if you have survived that warning and are willing to face what's ahead, can you turn with me to the book of Philippians chapter 3 and verse 17, where Paul makes this note to the Philippian church about where their loyalties lie and where they should ultimately be put. Brethren, join in following my example and note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end, note that, is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, meaning they just live for whatever feels like. They get the grumblies, then they're going after whatever it's being drawn to. Who set their mind on earthly things, Recognize that as well. That will apply to our study today. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the workings by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. So Paul gives this perspective to the Philippians in noting life going forward, that life as a Christian is not going to be easy. It's been said that if you act the way Jesus acted and taught the way Jesus taught, you behave the way that Jesus behaved, even though he was the perfect human being, logically you're going to be treated and get what he got. And he was rejected, hated, called a prince of demons and crucified by his own people when he did nothing but love them and tell them the truth. But noting this as well, that Paul sets their minds ahead towards saying, look, our loyalties aren't to the places that we've been born. It's not to the people that we would generally admire the attention, approval, and affection of. It's ultimately going to have to be either in God or it's going to have to be in something else. Now, with this as the premise, that you have a choice between an end of destruction or an end of eternity with Jesus and reaping the benefits thereof, we're going to discuss how this applies to Rainer and Bertolt in how their loyalties directly not only affected their pattern of behavior, but also their ultimate end. And I, again, I, I mentioned spoilers, so let's start. Rainer and Bertolt were introduced in the first season of Attack on Titan, as well as in some of the earlier episodes of the manga, and you couldn't really say much about them. They weren't bad guys. I mean, helping Armin out with his heavier loads and encouraging him to get on. Bertolt just kind of the quiet, tall guy. Relate to him at least that far. No farther, though. Let me emphasize that point. Anyway, hate that dude. Um, he's fictional. I'm allowed. But understand, among all the things that Rainer and Bertolt were, it couldn't have been misguided as far as motives. Their intentions were pure. And for all intents and purposes, if we're going to apply the standards that were laid out here in the book of Philippians, they actually were able to get most of these things right, motivation-wise. Now, no, we'll get into what they got wrong in a minute. But understand, they understood that their loyalties belonged with their true home, no matter where they lived currently at the time. Paul made the point in saying that though we live on this earth, our citizenship is in heaven. They understood that. They also understood that they needed to live according to the reality of their true citizenship. That's a Christian principle. They understood that based on the fact that my ultimate destination matters more than my temporary residence, I'm not going to get attached to or conform to this earth any more than I would, say, pick up the customs of a hotel life knowing that my house is almost done being built. And then thirdly, they were willing to lay down their lives for this reality. Now note, with all of these things being in alignment with their motives, we now need to realize, but they were the bad guys. Why is this a good thing? Understand, the issue 
wasn't in their motives. It was in the source of what motivated them, their methods. Because what did they get right? They understood their true citizenship. They acted like it, and they were willing to die for it. Sincerity, honesty, and as well a grasp of reality. But how did it affect their pattern of conduct? What ultimately made these things into a misguided venture? Well, the first issue was where their citizenship was. Their citizenship wasn't with the people who, say, uh, recognized human rights as uh, worth noting. At least not people beyond their own borders. The, I mean, the people of Marley were monsters for, through and through. You can really tell how Isama just basically based these guys on Nazi Germany as if it were 100% Nazi populace. These, I mean, for crying out loud, the Fritz bloodline was not favorable to them any more than the Jews, God's chosen people, by the way, were to the Germans. So understand that much. Where their citizenship mattered. Because if they lived according to that standard, that would also affect their behavior because though they were willing to live according to their true citizenship, they also followed a very interesting individual, an exemplar of the values of their homeland of Marley. And I'm of course referring to Zeke. I wouldn't consider him a positive role model as someone I want to aspire to be more like, well maybe in combat style, but has a mean right hook, but you understand the point that's being made here. This is, you, you follow a bad guy, then that makes you heading where he currently is, and he's not getting better. Let's just put it that way. And then third, how they were willing to fight for this kingdom. They didn't care about the lives that they destroyed. They didn't, well, they did, but they just got weepy about, well, they're told anyway, just got weepy about it afterwards. When there's nothing else that could be done. Ani, in the same way, when the incident with Marco occurred. Again, more spoilers, but you understand the points being made here. We'll we'll talk about more on we'll talk more about her in a separate study. I speak for a living. <laughs> oh boy. So understand. What were the things that Bertolt and Rainer got right? They understood their loyalties belonged to their true citizenship, they lived like it, and they're willing to die for it. Christian principles, but also understand as well where their citizenship was, who led them on that journey to become more like the people they were supposed to be, and as well where that would ultimately lead them, what they were willing to do to get there. That is what made the Christian principles into bad guy ethics. Not the ethics in of themselves, but the real issue was how and who and where they were ultimately trying to get back to. A den of monsters or a place where people are just trying to go on with their lives. Living in fear of the Titans granted, but follow the analogy. If we understand ourselves as Christians are supposed to live for heaven, we know that our true residence is there, that our destiny is there, then we don't have to conform to the standards of this world. Our methods are not to physically tear down this world. We know the temporal is going to rot and decay anyway. Our battle is against the strongholds of arguments and assaults against the truth. Our enemies are not with the forces of darkness physically leading this world, but the forces of darkness in heavenly places. Our, our, our weapons are in the truth. Our standards are in our own realities. And the ultimate way that we are called to fight and confront these things as Christians is through conversation, not coercion. That is based on the example that we have in the person of Jesus Christ. But what about the other step? Since we're talking about Rainer and Bertolt, how would their relationship with their God ultimately come into play? Well, Paul actually noted what that looks like in Romans chapter 10 and verse 2. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. Now in context, understand this was speaking of the Jewish nation, but not all Jews in general. Paul was a Jew. Peter was a Jew. The apostles were Jews. The early church and the majority were Jewish. But the nation of Israel as a whole, and as far as a majority in which I'm speaking, did not receive Messiah. In fact, 
to this day, a majority of Jews are either secular or just unaffiliated. Because if you look at the way that they responded to Jesus when he came, it wasn't a lack of evidence that was the issue. It was a lack of willingness to accept that evidence as true. They had understandings of what good people were, and those were in the Pharisees. And when Jesus called the Pharisees out on the carpet, the people had a choice. Either their standards of what a good person was, what a godly individual was, needed to change, or Jesus was wrong. And everyone loves the option that makes them right. This is the internet, after all. But understand as well, Paul makes the point in, uh, Paul makes the point in saying that they have a zeal for God, a passion for God, but not according to knowledge. And he goes on to say, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness. Now follow that, because when we look at this from the lens of Rainer and Bertolt, this verse will hopefully come alive to you and be able to be applied in a way that couldn't have been normally. They have not submitted to the righteousness of God, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Now, follow along with me on this. Rainer and Bertolt, what was their standard? What was their goal? Who was, who was their commander? Let's start with there. It was a Zeke, right? What was their ultimate hope in wanting to become uh, citizens of once again? It was Marley. And where were their ultimate loyalties? The equivalent of the Nazi party. Now, how did that affect them? Well, understand that just like Paul made the note in this verse, man becomes like his God. And if Jesus is not your standard for who God is, then you are becoming more like someone, fill in the blank, other than God. And regardless of how you feel about that, understand that the destination of that journey is separation from God. And that kingdom's figurehead is Satan. And I wouldn't consider him a spiritual goal to pursue. Now, Christians say that very presumptuously, but I want to take the time to explain to you why. First, understand Satan's personality. His name, Satan, means accuser. He's also called deceiver, murderer, father of lies. He, he'd be the equivalent of a supernatural internet troll, and no one likes them, right? Uh, the point was made in John chapter 8 and verse 44 by Jesus about his character and saying, you are of your father the devil and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it and setting a fine example to his kids indeed. The second reason why I wouldn't consider Satan a goal worth pursuing is not only as you pursue these kinds of character traits, you will become more like them, i.e. a liar, a murderer, a thief, an accuser, a troll for all intents and purposes. Now, am I saying that whenever someone is a troll in comment, you call them a son of Satan? No, they're just being led by their emotions. But who was the one who made that a thing? Who's the first one to exemplify those kinds of traits? Not a person you want to become more a part of, nor do you want becoming more a part of you. Secondly, his pers or, uh, we talked about his personality. Second was his methods. When Satan is called these things, accuser, murderer, liar, thief, it's not because of slander. It's a well-earned reputation. In fact, in the most straightforward way possible, Jesus contrasted his own contribution to mankind to the enemies by saying this in John chapter 10 and verse 10. The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and may have it more abundantly. Now compare the two. How did Jesus act on these, on these desires? Did he just say, I love you, I want the best for you? And then we just kind of looked up and went, thanks. All right, see ya. You can go to hell now. Wouldn't do us a lot of good, right? But on the other hand, if I say, Okay, Jesus, you love us, you want the best for us, you want to give us eternal life, but we're kind of in a state of death. Our bodies will eventually die. Our souls are currently separated from you. How is this going to be undone? Oh, John three sixteen through 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, 
but that the world through him might be saved, he put his money where his mouth was. But contrasted by that as well, if God demonstrated his love for the world by giving his life, how did Satan gain the reputation of being the murderer and the liar that he is? Where did that start? Thirdly, reason why we wouldn't consider Satan a role model is his destiny. Understand the definition of hell isn't this bizarre paradise of pain or a dramatic series of unique places of cruelty that are basically just rehashes of the underworld and paganism. You won't find that in the Bible anywhere. The reason why the Bible refers to hell, capital H, hell, as Gehenna, which was a garbage dump outside of Jerusalem, as uh, the lake of fire, referred to in Revelation chapter 20, as outer darkness, se total, total separation from light, are all alluding to this very basic fact that hell is simply separation from God in its entirety. And in order to understand why this would be a very unpleasant existence is to understand why say for example suffocation is considered torture it's not necessarily the pressure on our throat or the uh, you know whatever's causing the blockage you can put blockage to any sort of thing in your body it's an irritant at most but the reason why a lack of oxygen to your lungs and I basically just said that right there isn't because of the suffocation itself, it's the lack of oxygen, the lack of something that you require that makes something torturous. It's the lack of oxygen that makes suffocation torture. So follow that logic and say, so what makes hell, hell? It's the separation from something that we need to sustain our souls. It's the presence of God. Now understand this. As I point out, that the fate of the enemy, the fate of our enemy, is one that he chose. And those who stand with him will be given the same as requested. Now, why would anyone request that? Well, it's because a lot of people don't understand what hell actually is. They look at people like, you know, Ozzy Osbourne, I'd say as an example, you know, I'm not going to be in heaven with all the sissy robes. I'm going to be in hell with driving Harleys with the devil, drinking beers. To which we say, please put back on your shirt. But <laughs> when, when asked about this himself, Ozzy, in only the way that he could enunciate, I'll, I'll just... I could do my Aussie impression, you know, I'll, I'll be intelligible. He said, I didn't know what I was saying, I was drunk. But, <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne, reality TV show, series show star at its finest. But anyway, I digress. Let's get back to the really serious matter we're discussing here. Understand, people are only given hell because they chose it. And that's reflected by their lives as wanting nothing to do with God. And therefore, that existence in eternity is simply God saying, your will be done. But understand that in this world, God still gives us his blessings. Blessings like the capacity to breathe, like the capacity to feel joy and love and hope, to have that satisfaction in relationships and have an ultimate purpose and meaning in life. But when we take God out of the equation, we're living the kind of life that's enjoying God's benefits, but refusing the source of those blessings. And when you understand that when God separates you from himself, as you've requested, as you've shown by the way you've lived your life, he's not obliged to let you continue playing with his toys. Understand, people will be given hell as requested, but whether you like it when you see it or not is another matter entirely. God will only give us what we want in eternity, and that is a relationship with him forever or the separation from him. That we've been asking for our entire lives. <sighs> Where will the enemy ultimately end? Revelation chapter 20 and verse 10. And the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. They had been in there for a thousand years at this point so they weren't burned up. 
And I say it again, I'm emphasizing burn just to follow the logic and these analogies. But here's the sad part. And they will be tormented day and night, forever and ever. Now literally in the Greek, that is the most emphatic way of describing eternity. It's from the ages to the ages. Uh, my, my Greek's terrible. It's aeonios post estonionios. Not sure many of you guys needed to know that. We're, we're talking about a Japanese cartoon, but understand these things. I wouldn't wish any of this on anyone. But this life is where eternity makes up its mind. It's not enough to have passion for God, or passion for anything for that matter. Rainer and Bertolt were passionate for Marley. They're willing to kick in the walls be able to demonstrate that point. They were willing to kidnap Aaron. They were willing to cost the lives of who knows how many people at this point. We need to have faith in the right God and a faith that's based on facts. Do you know for a fact that Jesus was a real person in history? Do you know that these things, or the things rather, that he claimed for himself either disqualifies him as an insane person or confirms him as God in human flesh. Do you understand that when God visited this world, he showed his heart for us? by laying it down in the most barbarous way conceived by human imagination. God could have entered at any time in history, and yet he chose that time to demonstrate how much he's willing to suffer with us. And do you understand as well that the reason he suffered in those specific ways was based on God playing fair by his own rules? not holding back at the severity of our sin, what separates us from him. And understanding as well that based on the pattern of Old Testament sacrifices that his death redeemed us from our sins. Do you know that? And lastly, and most importantly, do you understand, do you know for a fact that Jesus of Nazareth rose from the dead in a moment of history? ultimately proving that if anyone's word is going to be taken on the afterlife, it may as well be his. These facts matter, and if for no other reason, count the costs. If these are wrong, we'll never know. If they aren't, then you're wrong. You'll know forever. Jesus' pattern and future for those who follow him, once again, is to become more like him, to be treated as he was treated, and physically die, but be with him forever. The same applies to those who follow Satan. They'll act more like him, they'll be treated as he was treated, and they'll physically die, but be with him forever. That's not good. Know who you're following. Know why you're following them. And make that decision based on where you know it will ultimately get you in the end. Rainer and Bertolt followed Zeke. How'd that work out? Thank you for your time and listening to this study. If you have any sincere questions, leave them in the comments below. If you'd like to encourage the ministry, you know where to go. But most importantly, you know someone who's familiar with these characters but not these principles. Please share the study with anyone you feel would be blessed by it. Thank you once again for your time and taking it to listen to this study. And once again remember, the life that we live and the way that we live it has to be a reflection of where that life will ultimately be spent in eternity. This is where eternity makes up its mind. Don't make the mistake of investing it on feelings, or on facts that you can't confirm for yourself. Know why you believe what you believe, and make sure you're believing in someone worth the effort.